video is crowdfunded by you and sponsored by Midwest Homes for Pets. We've got a really exciting video today. This is the first time I've ever had a Shiba Inu in one of my videos. I'm gonna be showing you how to get a handle on a lot of your training, especially if you have a new puppy in your life. We're gonna be dealing with some of the most common issues that I hear about from new puppy parents. Become a greater part of our community by liking me on Facebook, link will be in the description, and become a patron on patreon.com slash zachgeorge too. Contributions from you are going to allow us to do much more in the coming months to promote free, humane training to anyone with an internet connection. I've had a couple of training sessions already with Riku and, and Jennifer and Jonathan have done an incredible job. Why did you guys decide to get a Shiba Inu? Just we're both into the, the Japanese culture and Japan in general. So you speak Japanese, is that right? Yes. Inu is how you say dog. Mm -hmm. What does Shiba Inu mean? It's translation to brushwood dog. How do you say dog in your language? What have you guys found to be the most challenging so far, Jonathan? Um, his play biting is the worst. Once he goes into <laughs> that biting, it's hard to get him out of it. This is probably one of the most common issues I get emails from every day with, with dogs this age. It can be really overwhelming when you have a puppy like this because you really have to pick your battles. There's a time to address certain behaviors and there's a time to ignore it and focus on teaching different things. You, as a person, have to kind of feel that out as you go. That's what the first few months of teaching a dog are all about, building the communication and learning to understand one another. And with that comes a little bit of disconnect from time to time, as you guys are no doubt experiencing a little bit of, am I right? Yeah. Yes. Almost all destructive and unwanted behavior that you're dealing with, like potty training or chewing or digging, can be solved by controlling our dog's environment for that first six months to one year. Really good trainers are wonderful at controlling their puppy or dog's surroundings at all times. Now that means supervising them, and when you can't do that, either having them on a leash, yes, in the house, as you see Riku, he has that leash on so he's easier to get to, or having them in a crate, or an exercise pen, or an area in the house that you're comfortable with where your dog will be safe. This is a life stage of split door exercise pen, and this is a wonderful way to control your dog's environment, especially if you're going to be gone several hours and they need to have a little bit more room. What's great about this exercise pen is that it doesn't take any time tools to assemble a collapse is really easy. A small investment like this in a crate will probably prevent lots of damage and keep bad habits from arising in the first place. It's like their own private bedroom and you have the peace of mind knowing that your house isn't getting destroyed. You could even put your life stages crate right here and join the two, so it's super awesome. You have a partial split door. That means that allows you to step in without worrying about your dog bolting out if you needed to give them food or water or anything like that, for example. And by the way, I'll have a link in the description on where you can look into getting this if you're interested. Oh boy, yeah, there's the play biting. Boy, he's got sharp teeth, ouch. Hey, what's this? Why don't you bite on this instead? You know, when you're dealing with play biting with a puppy, it's really important to immediately get their teeth on something that's acceptable. When your dog gets really revved up and they're biting you like crazy, that's when you break out the food because that's likely to give them more of a soft mouth. You can see he is a bad play biter, but he's, He's, he's really over the top right now. I can feel his heart racing. It's not realistic to eliminate it, but it is realistic to uh, minimize it. I'm gonna make him do a little something for it so he doesn't think he's getting rewarded for the biting. So I'm gonna ask him to sit. Oh, sit. Yes, very nice, good job. And we're gonna see if we can get him to go into the exercise pen here, come on. And look at that, just like that, he goes right in. I'm gonna let him come right back out. Good, we've got some hops too, huh? I'm gonna try and pet him without him biting me. That's my goal right now. No, sit. And I'm, right there, there was, I mean, that was really subtle. There was a little lick right there. That's what you look for, is a little bit of licking to start replacing the play biting. Look at this, I'm petting him right now. I'm not getting bit. There's biting, I'm gonna stop petting him. I'm gonna ask him to sit. His sit looks really good. You have to do this for weeks. This is normal when you have a puppy. A lot of people attribute breed stereotypes to certain behaviors. For example, with Border Collies and Aussies, I'll get a lot of emails. My dog keeps nipping my heels, so it must be because they're a herding dog that they do that. He, he nips your heels, doesn't he? He's not a herding dog. <laughs> you know, I mean, all puppies do that, you know, but there are gonna be things that are unique in, in many cases to breeds, I don't mean to diminish that. Uh, Jonathan, why don't you show me some of the stuff you've taught him, and let's get low right. here. Sit. Lie down. Good. Good boy. Have you taught him up? Up. 
Usually with a dog this young, you wanna be very liberal in your rewards and letting them know what you like often just to get the habits established, but that was awesome. Leave it and look at me. It's such an essential skill for dogs to learn, but it's not that common for them to learn this that young. Why is that so impressive? Because we're throwing something that our dog really loves, a turkey on the ground, and he's getting the attention on him. You have to do this before you can expect your dog to not chase another cat or squirrel or dog down the street. You can see the description of this video if you need help with that. It might look like we're teaching sit, lie down, up, leave it, and watch me, but the bigger picture is we're teaching our dog how to listen to us, how to understand us, how to build communication. If you can build overall communication, then you can teach your dog to do anything. Every dog needs to know how to stay. It's the most important skill in the world. So I'm gonna kind of give you an idea of how to introduce stay. Now I'll have videos in the description that will give you more information on this. Sit, good, stay, yes. Okay, get up. And I told him he could get up there just to make sure he knew the stay was over. You wanna master a one second stay before you start walking away, before you start asking them to stay when they see a dog or something like that. Once again, here's how it looks. Sit, stay, one, two, three. Okay, good, very nice. That was good, I was even able to pet him there without him biting me. Stay is very important, but so is come when called. Now I'll have a video in the description that will help you. Keep it happy, keep it engaging, encourage your dog to want to come to you. That's the trick with this. Start at a nice short distance like this to make it easy. The easier you make new concepts to your dog, the better. High pitched voice can really, really help a lot too to encourage your dog to come to you. But you can see him perk up. He's like, hey, what's that? I definitely want to go running to that. You get it any way you can, as long as you're motivating them to do it from within. And you're making it worth his while, letting him know with the turkey that you love it when he does that. This will make him more likely to repeat this behavior in the future. If he were to try and run past you, you have him on a leash. Now, if you were practicing this outside where he could really, really get past you, you'd want to have him on a harness uh, for his safety. Does that make sense? Yes. But I'm not too worried about him getting a lot of momentum. Here. Before we came here to shoot this video, I actually made a post on Facebook asking you guys what some of the most common puppy issues you were dealing with. And a number of you uh, said things like potty training, which we didn't address in this video. I'll have a link in the description for that, uh, as well as a more detailed video on puppy biting, jumping, and barking. Uh, another important thing to remember too with young puppies is to socialize them, to get them around as many dogs and people as you possibly can. Create positive scenarios around all those situations too. Consider subscribing so you get notifications for all of my future videos. Consider being a patron on patreon.com slash Zach George. You can contribute as little or as much as you'd like. That will help us spread the word more with positive training, allow us to get out in the field to do more videos just like this one. Click thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and tell me, is your dog good? when you leave the house. Check out our sponsor as well, Midwest Homes for Pets. We'll see you guys in the next video.